चेक है I think we can start. Uh, a great pleasure to present you one of our ARIS project topic. Uh, it's a part of our educational package, uh, geomagnetic field or the Earth's magnetic field. This presentation has been prepared by our expert of geomagnetism, uh, Dr. Anne Neska. Uh, uh, Dr. Neska works in the physical observatory at Belsk. Uh, this is situated about 50 kilometers from the center of Poland, from uh, from Warsaw, from from our capital. And uh, my name is Piotr Stankiewicz. I'm a methodological expert in our project, the Eris project, but uh, also, pro as you know, uh, with another project, Edu Arctic. So I am an geologist and uh, I work in the Institute of Geophysics, uh, Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, and my office is, uh, of course, situated in, this, uh, in the capital of Poland, in Warsaw. Okay, uh, today. I will try to answer uh, why our compasses uh, show the north direction, or is it really north, or maybe not? Uh, I think we we discuss this and we will uh, will give you some some explanation. I think I'd like to imagine that our Earth is a huge magnet. It's they're really big inside the Earth. And uh, all the space, there's a space around this. And the Earth magnet field, or just can simply say that this is a geomagnetic field. Um, okay. So, you can, if just uh, simple magnet, uh, you can uh, simply check that there are uh, special field lines around this uh, this magnet, and this is uh, our planet. So field lines run both, also in the interior of the Earth, but also uh, in outer space. And uh, you should know that the distance of uh, uh, the space around uh, the planet is a distance of many tens of thousands of kilometers. So, so it is really space around our our world, our, our Earth, where this geomagnetic field is present. Okay. So remember just one fact that there is a big magnet inside uh, the Earth. We'll try to find the magnet inside our planet. The picture, and uh, of course, the, this uh, layers, uh, upper mantle, mantle, but if you focus at the outer core, the inner core. So it's uh, that's at about 3,000 kilometers, and uh, look at this uh, Earth's core. It is divided into outer, this is the yellow part of this picture, uh, and the inner. Uh, both of them called iron. You know, iron is, is a ferromagnetic metal, and uh, the core is liquid. And uh, you have to know that uh, in this place, there's, of course, a very high uh, very pressure, but also a very high temperature. Maybe uh, like to to ask uh, how how many uh, uh, degrees centigrade uh, is there in the outer core? So you can answer using chat. So hot is the yellow part, the 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 outer core. 
go down and I will try to explain uh, next. Um, the other liquid, but the inner core is solid. Uh, because, uh, because of the pressure, the high pressure, and that's that's why, uh, of course, oppose uh, the, the the inner core is solid. Um, no. uh, if you uh, if you know our packages uh, Aris, in project areas, we have also a package about uh, uh, Earth and. Then you can find out uh, how we know that this the outer core is uh, um, liquid and the inner core is solid. So I don't want to guess uh, uh, hot is there, so I can tell you that it's about six thousand degrees degrees centigrade. As you know, Earth is still rotating. You know, the rotation of the Earth. And the heat, and so the Earth's daily rotation, said that this huge masses of the clean metal is all still in motion. Uh, the Earth is rotating, and the core, liquid water core, liquid metal, iron, is rating as well. Uh, as you know, is a good electric conductor. Yeah, we use uh, iron as to to conduct electricity. So this is a very good conductor. It's solid or liquid, of course, but it's conductor. And as a result of this motion, with electric current. You can say that we have a really big power station in the Earth. Yes, that's true. So, uh, iron is rotating, and it becomes it's uh, uh, a low electricity light. And look at this law, the Biot-Savart's law. Electric current is surrounded by a magnetic field. Mm. If you have a battery and uh, a piece of uh, conductor, you can uh, put it to your end where this electric current inside your conductor, you can find out that it, has, uh, it, is, it becomes a magnet. At the same situation. We have a lot of electricity inside the Earth, and that's why uh, it becomes a huge magnet. So I hope that now we have uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, magnetic field, geomagnetic field. Yes, I hope. So look at the next. That sun produce not only uh, uh, light, not only UV radiation, but also are particles, charged electrically uh, particles, and comes directly from the sun in space, and also goes they go uh, to our but if you look carefully, uh, there is a strange fluctuation around our planet. Uh, these particles are influenced by something. Uh, something is changing their motion, and it's just magnetosphere. If you look at the definition. Uh, the area or the size where a 
electrically charged particles from the space are influenced by the geomagnetic field the magnetosphere. So, uh, if have, uh, your uh, which is printed, uh, look at exercise two. There is a question. Uh, are the following questions basic on information you have got during the lecture? And the first question is, what is the magnetosphere? Once you have your, your uh, card printed, you can uh, write down as, uh, just as a note from from our our lesson so if you have uh, uh, I think you need a few seconds to write down this information because I think it's quite important information the area where electrically charged particles for the space are mainly influenced by the geomagnetic field this I hope there's enough time to do it. Okay, but why must uh, uh, do any researches about magnetosphere? Is it very important for us, or maybe it's just loss of time? Of course, it's not a loss of time because uh, this magnetic, just magnetosphere, uh, we say that it's a natural natural shield and it protects us. All all of our planet, uh, plants, animals, uh, the humans, is this harmful nuclear radiation, which, which comes mainly from the sun. So we we name it the the solar wind. Uh, the important function of of magnetosphere is protection against the solar wind. Okay. Next. Okay, you can see this antique, but this old shield uh, in the upper part of my set of my presentation. Uh, I'd like you to remember that uh, the magnetosphere and this shield, so it's very, very similar because um, Earth's magnetosphere is is a kind uh, is a kind of the uh, Shield protects us. So, as you can see, uh, particles they, they can't uh, they can't go through uh, our magnetosphere. Not just uh, they can't go directly through our atmosphere, but uh, they are selected by it from by their course and along field lines. So uh, remember what the f uh, magnetic field lines, and that's why, as you see in the picture, they drift along these lines. So they goes they go directly to the magnetic poles. Uh, uh, that's why in the polar region. We we can observe a phenomenon called polar lights, or just the aurora. So aurora can be observed only uh, near this. Uh, in this, of course, sometimes I remember that uh, maybe one year one year ago uh, we could observe uh, the aurora also in Poland. But it is very, it's very rare. So, so 
really, really large amount of this radiation to see it uh, in our uh, latitude. But uh, this phenomenon is, uh, is very common just in polar region. That's why, because, because uh, uh, particles, charged particles, goes uh, 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 along uh, field, magnetic field lines. Okay. So I hope it is quite clear. I hope, of course. Uh, uh, you can see how polar light generated. This is another question from from our uh, from worship. This is C. How are polar lights created? So I will try to explain you, and I would like you to write down information to find this uh, uh, car. Solar wind particles and atmosphere, as I told you, along these geomagnetic field lines, and there they with gas molecules. Gas molecules, nitrogen and oxygen, and the atoms, atoms uh, Molecules, gas molecules, absorb every uh, absorb energy, and that's why they emit it, uh, emitting uh, light. Of course, the color of polar lights uh, depends uh, on these molecules, gas molecules. So we have different color of nitrogen or oxygen, but also. It uh, depends on, on the height of the collision. So uh, we can observe the auroras between 80 to 600 kilometers above Earth's surface. So I think you need uh, uh, seconds just to run down this information uh, to about how our polar lights generated. So can write down this that solar wind particles enter the atmosphere along geomagnetic field lines where they cut with gas molecules, nitrogen and oxygen, and their atoms absorb energy, which is emitted in the form of light. And they this as a light. Break just to write down. Write your volume. Okay. I think it's just it's enough time. Uh, if it's something to um, read details, uh, you can download our presentation from every project page. Uh, it's everything is uh, for you, so you can go to this presentation and to uh, analyze uh, in detail what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Okay. okay so let's see next. Wow, magnet storm, geomagnetic storm. Uh, when scientists measure the intensity of geomagnetic field, they observe very intensive, intense, very intense perturbation. And this is just geomagnetic storm. Uh, what is the reason of this storm? So we you to understand it because uh, we measure uh, not uh, not uh, not uh, this uh, 
erupts plasma um, of observed also, but uh, uh, in magnetism we measure uh, uh, the distance of the magnetic field. Uh, uh, this uh, called the storm is caused by eruption of plasma of, on the sun. So this this phenomenon, this uh, eruption, uh, called the coronal mass ejection. Coronal mass ejection is a reason of a magnetic storm, of, which can which we may observe uh, in, uh, on the planet. Okay, tell me, how long time? What do you think? How long time? Uh, these particles, this uh, uh, solar wind, need to to go from sun to the earth. When how, oh, for, uh, today, in this moment, we, we observe this eruption of plasma, and we can expect that the magnetic uh, storm uh, will be present in our. Uh, we will observe it. There's how many minutes, hours, or maybe days? Years? Not years, of course. It's stupid answers, so don't answer the years. But how many minutes? Okay. Eight minutes. But I think that eight minutes we need to see the light just to, because uh, uh, I think eight minutes is time when the light from the sun. Uh, goes to the Earth, so I think when we observe this uh, plasma eruption, we observe it after eight minutes. But mm -hmm. but uh, particles need uh, no more time to 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 the. If this coronal mass ejection is directed just direct toward the Earth, so on this situation, this geomagnetic storm occurs, and it takes 20 to 70 hours. So, you observe this eruption of plasma. So expect that tomorrow or be in two days. In three, we can observe a magnetic storm. So, or, or maybe not, but this is very important because uh, the magnetic storm uh, may affect our life in our planet. Uh, it makes some problems with GPS. Also, lights in the Earth's orbit can be damaged. Of course, in the orbit, maybe, it, and intense geomagnetic storms catch power lines and the networks in some regions of globe. So, so you see in the picture the transformer damage, and true. The history we have some uh, example that geomagnetic storm uh, may, for example, power lines. I told you when we start our lesson. I told you that uh, uh, I'm sure if uh, our compasses show exactly the north direction because you can see in this picture that magnetic poles and geographic poles are not in the same place another question in the, uh, your word is, um, be what is the difference between the geomagnetic and geographic poles so, 
that you could write down this that magnetic poles are in the same region, but not exactly in the same place as geographic poles. Now, uh, they, uh, magnetic poles are situated. Uh, the north magnetic pole is in northern Canada, and uh, south magnetic is uh, in the region of Antarctica near Australia. Maybe uh, you can uh, north and where south uh, uh, because the rule is that uh, the south magnetic pole is nearby the north geographic pole and vice versa. But uh, to be to, uh, to make it easy. Uh, just in geography, uh, in education, we say that this is the same. So we can say that North Magnetic Pole and North Geographic Pole uh, are in the same part. So it will you can we can tell this. But sometimes, uh, of course, you, in literature we can find out that it's. Uh, uh, but but I think it's not, not very important uh, in our lesson. Okay, look at picture. The position of geomagnetic pole is changing. Still, very slow, but continuously, slowly but continuously. It's about 10 to um, kilometers per year. So I think it's quite, quite long distance. Uh, uh, we can observe uh, the changes in 1894. So it's quite long distance where okay. This is very interesting. If it's possible that geomagnetic poles uh, can change their position, just exchange their position, that our north magnetic pole became a south magnetic pole, the south magnetic pole became a north magnetic pole. Yes. I think it's, uh, it's possible. Uh, in the picture, in our um, we took, we measured this in the rock. So, uh, from investigation in rock magnetism, we know that many times in Earth history, this magnetic north, uh, uh, magnetic pole, they change their positions. Of course, the last. Uh, last reversal was uh, 180,000 years ago, so it was a long time ago, and we cannot predict where can uh, can start time. As you can see, uh, this is the uh, on this diagram you can see black and white periods. So the black periods uh, are uh, they are, uh, are today, and the white inverted poles. So as you can see, this term today is the longest. Uh, of course, it may occur at any time. We don't know. And we don't know uh, what w would be And during the last five million years, the poles reversed about 20 times. And we, of course, we, we can, uh, we don't know where can it be next time. So, as you remember, our show uh, where the magnetic pole is, and not, not where the geographic pole is. The okay. Mm. OK, 
text, I think. Yes, so if the compasses go as magnetic, no, magnetic pole, uh, we like to know where the north. So, so uh, there is a declination. Declination is an angle between the magnetic and geographic north direction. Uh, we say that is, the nation is positive, uh, uh, where our co show us uh, uh, on the east side from geographic north, and negative when it shows us uh, in the north direction. And if we declination, show exactly where the pole is. But of course, it's different in different parts of our uh, world, our Earth. This slide uh, we should use if you are a sailor or a navigator. Uh, you use this kind of map. This is nation map, and uh, you will you can uh, locate localization and uh, read what is the nation. And if you you uh, must to do your uh, shit after my after my lesson. This is first. This is the first exercise. And uh, but do it correctly. You need also uh, instructions. So instructions also uh, uh, include in our lesson. And read carefully. You can do this exercise. I, I I think it, it won't be uh, very complicated to do for you. Uh, no, uh, some time uh, there are some we have correct compensation. If you have another magnet, if this magnet uh, nearby the compass, the compass will show you uh, 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 the, uh, the object, a lot of iron, and you put it uh, next to the compass, it doesn't. And all the current just is, uh, is became a that's why it's just uh, if you want to use your uh, compass uh, correctly, you should avoid uh, magnets, uh, you should magnetic objects, and also electric current. So we have a question. Is it reasonable to install a compass ship or a vessel uh, where the vessel has a huge mass of iron? So it's to use a com using a compass uh, yeah, on this uh, uh, ship. But the answer is it's not a uh, compass uh, on, uh, vessel on the ship is uh, always uh, in place. So it's stable. Uh, you can't move it. And as you see, this bus red in, and they made of soft iron, and they are put it there just for compensation of the magnetic field of the vessel of the ship, of this ship. So, if we know how the iron of ship. Because we can compensate it using the green and red balls. So that, uh, of course, can, uh, you can use your not your but the band compass, which is uh, it's into the uh, into the ship.
uh, click to conclusion, you can see our, our Bell Observatory when we uh, measure this genetic field. Of course, uh, it's, it's, uh, we do it manually because a man as observer is uh, uh, so we need to use the observer and uh, we do it every day. And all our data goes to uh, the magnetic of race. It is intermagnetic. And uh, after our lesson, you can print. Uh, you can print uh, uh, your work. Okay, I can see it here. And there's another exercise where you can look at this uh, uh, magnetogram, Bell's Observatory, but not only from the Bell's, we have three of this. Because in Poland, we have three observatories of magnetism. Uh, maybe not all of them are in Poland. As you can see, this point uh, Bell's, and this is the Polish Observatory in Spitsbergen. So, uh, are really, really far north, and you should using your using this microbes. You should, uh, differences between high and low uh, um, uh, of, of uh, geomagnetism, and the answer answer the question. And you should find out and write uh, uh, Polish Polar Station in the Shurken. Some more information if you are interested in our subject. Of course, first of all, you can use our uh, ARIS page where you can. And more materials about the magnetic field and also uh, uh, about other packages. Uh, uh, I think these materials are quite good. And uh, if you are interested, you can visit the magnet network, find out some more information. And uh, if you are from other countries, you can. Find, out, find uh, station just just near your uh, home. So I think uh, it's enough for today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Uh, maybe if you if, if have some question, you can wait a minute. But thank you very much. And I think you have a nice day. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so thank you for hosting. Uh, close uh, our lesson. Thank you very much. Bye.